Buying a telescope and making the leap into amateur astronomy is an exciting thing. But the eyepieces that you choose are just as important if you want to go out to have incredible views of the night sky. I'm Michael Martin and welcome to Late Night Astronomy. Over the past 15 years through two telescopes and dozens of eyepieces, I've learned a few things along the way. And today we're going to walk through some things for you to consider if you're looking to make some major purchases of new eyepieces for your telescope. Like most people when I first got into this hobby, the main thing I wanted to know was how high can I push the magnification of my telescope. But I would encourage you to steer away from that question and focus more not on how close you can see an object, but how wide you can see the night sky around that object. This is called the apparent field of view, and most eyepieces that'll come with your telescope probably have around a 50 degree field of view. That's a great starting point. But what if we could open up the night sky to let's say 60, 70, or 80 degrees? That would allow you to see more of the surrounding space around your object, and will also give you more time to observe as your target drifts across the field of view, which can be important for those of us who don't own tracking telescopes. Some eyepiece designs even push the apparent field of view up to 90, 100, and 110 degrees. But as you can imagine, the more degrees of space that you can see, the higher the price is going to be in most cases. So I would encourage you to look at something in perhaps a 60 to 80 degree field of view for your purchase. A new eyepiece in the 60 to 80 degree field of view range is a nice starting point for us, but we also want to make sure this new eyepiece is comfortable to use. To do that, we have to look at something called the eye relief. This is the distance that your eye needs to be from the eyepiece to take in the entire field of view that you're seeing. If an eyepiece has a shorter eye relief, your eye will have to be closer to it than if it has a longer eye relief. With all the eyepieces that I've owned, I've personally found around 13 millimeters of eye relief to be about as low as I can go, with 15 millimeters and higher of eye relief being a much more comfortable view at the eyepiece. So if we're looking for a nice set of eyepieces that have between a 60 to 80 degree apparent field of view, with roughly 15 millimeters of eye relief, we can now get to everyone's favorite question, how high can you go in terms of magnification? To determine magnification, you'll need to take the focal length of your telescope and divide it by the focal length of the eyepiece. For example, my 12-inch Dobsonian telescope has a focal length of 1500 millimeters. So if I use a 6 millimeter eyepiece with my telescope, I'm going to get around 250 times magnification. To give you an idea of the absolute highest magnification you can push your telescope, multiply your telescope's aperture in inches by 40. But I've got to tell you that even though I have had a few nights with remarkable views at 500 times magnification, I can count those nights on one hand, with the scene conditions being perfect, the outdoor temperature being cold, and the telescope mirror being perfectly cooled. I think a more reasonable limit for our magnification is going to be around 20 to 25 times per inch of aperture, which for my telescope puts me between 250 and 300 times magnification on most nights. How low can we go in terms of magnification? To understand that, we have to talk about something known as the exit pupil. The exit pupil created by the combination of your eyepiece and telescope is the width of the beam of light coming into your eye with lower magnifications creating a larger exit pupil and higher magnifications creating a smaller exit pupil. To figure out the exit pupil, you'll need to take the focal length of your eyepiece and divide it by the focal ratio of your telescope. For example, my telescope is an F5 reflector, and if I use a 30 millimeter eyepiece, I'll end up with around a six millimeter exit pupil. You don't wanna go larger than a seven millimeter exit pupil, especially if you own a reflector telescope. And keep in mind that as we age, our maximum pupil size begins to shrink as well. A nice collection of four or five eyepieces with exit pupils ranging from six millimeters to one millimeter is gonna give you a wide range of choices when you go out to hunt down objects in the night sky. Now let's get down to making some choices. I'm gonna leave a link to every eyepiece mentioned in this video and some resources to help you figure out what to buy in the description below. Also, please consider buying through my affiliate link at High Point Scientific. They've been my go-to place for amateur astronomy for decades now. And if you choose to buy through these links, I appreciate your support of this channel. So we're looking for eyepieces with a 60 to 80 degree apparent field of view that are gonna give us probably around 15 millimeters at least of eye relief. 
We don't want to push our telescope more than 20 to 25 times per inch of aperture, and we also don't want to go lower than let's say a 6 or 7 millimeter exit pupil. Let me walk you through the eyepieces that I chose for my 12 inch F5 reflector, but please keep your specific telescope in mind when you're making your choices. For my highest magnification eyepiece, I chose the 6 millimeter Delos from Teleview. It has a 72 degree apparent field of view and gives me 250 times magnification through my telescope at around a 1.2 millimeter exit pupil and a true field of view of 0.29 degrees. The true field of view is the actual amount of sky your telescope and eyepiece combination shows. And to calculate that, you divide the apparent field of view of the eyepiece by the magnification it gives in your telescope. One thing in particular I love about the Delos line of eyepieces is that it has an adjustable eye guard that allows you to perfectly find the best eye relief whether you wear glasses or don't, with a maximum eye relief of up to 20 millimeters. On very rare occasions, I've even been able to use it with a two times focal extender, pushing my telescope up to 500 times magnification. Even though I can count on one hand the times I've used magnifications that high on the moon and Jupiter, the views were simply stunning. I'm gonna lump my next two eyepieces together because they're both the workhorses for my nightly observing. The first is a 10 millimeter Delos that gives me 150 times magnification, a two millimeter exit pupil, and has a true field of view of 0.48 degrees. The other is a 14 millimeter Delos that gives me 107 times magnification, a 2.8 millimeter exit pupil, and a true field of view of 0.67 degrees. On any given night, I'm using one or both of these for the vast majority of my views of open clusters, planetary nebulas, globular clusters, and galaxies. You'll also find a lot of people say that some of the most used eyepieces on any given night will have around a two millimeter exit pupil. The eyepiece that I start out with almost every night to star hop to faint deep sky objects is the 24 millimeter panoptic from Teleview. It has a 68 degree apparent field of view at 63 times magnification, a 4.8 millimeter exit pupil, and shows me 1.1 degrees of the sky, all while providing 15 millimeters of eye relief. This is an excellent eyepiece that will give you the widest possible view through an inch and a quarter eyepiece. I went back and forth about the need for a fifth eyepiece, but ended up adding another low powered eyepiece to my case. It was the 30 millimeter UFF by APM. It has a 70 degree field of view, gives me 50 times magnification, has 22 millimeters of eye relief, a six millimeter exit pupil, and shows 1.4 degrees of space. This is about as low as I can go in terms of magnification for my eyepiece, but the wide field of view has given some incredible views of larger deep sky objects like the Pleiades, the Double Cluster, and the Andromeda Galaxy. The performance of these eyepieces in my F5 reflector, even without a coma correcting paracore, has really impressed me. With almost pinpoint sharp stars, all but out to the extreme edges of the apparent field of view. Even though I can only speak for the performance of the eyepieces that I've personally bought and used in my telescope, your budget and where you live around the world will greatly impact the eyepieces that you end up choosing for yourself. Two resources that have helped me over the years is a book called The Backyard Astronomer's Guide, which really got me into this hobby about 20 years ago. The other is the forums over on cloudynights.com, where there's always excellent debate and analysis going on regarding hundreds of eyepieces and how valuable they might be for you to make for your purchase. And I'll leave a link to both of these resources in the description below. I hope you found this eyepiece guide helpful. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to get more updates on products that you can buy to help you explore the night sky. But most importantly, let us know what questions you have about eyepieces that you're looking to purchase in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.